So uh, before we jump into the first study, I want to quickly explain a few things about this warm up. First, it's designed to get you warmed up and fully functional for anything you need to play in a typical day of practice or performance. Uh, it does this while still leaving you time for a coffee, possibly taking a quick dump after the coffee, and checking Facebook to see pictures of your friend's dinner last night. And it does this all under 30 minutes, including the dump. Uh, I've specifically tried to make this warm up as accessible to as broad a range of skill levels as possible. This should be easily learned by advanced high school players, amateur adults, all the way through the professional tubist. The drills contained here assume you've already done something to get your air moving, uh, whether it's a morning workout, breathing gym, or some other exercise to get your air supply plentiful and supported. Uh, final note, I recorded this video while actually warming up from the first note of the day through the last note of the video, and it sounds like it. In fact, uh, the very first thing I buzz on the first drill is woefully out of tune in the first five notes. <laughs> Boo-hoo, poor me. I hope that this warm-up helps you on those days when life has its boot in your ass and you're not able to spend a leisurely morning warming up. Thanks for watching. All right, let's get to work. One, two, one, two. Next is low rolling, a nice, relaxing, gradual descent into the low register. When I'm pressed for time during a warm up, I generally don't like to do long tones as I feel that there are better, more efficient, less tiring ways to get the blood flowing in the muscles of the embouchure. Low rolling is just one of many options. Again, I'm killing multiple birds with one stone by also alternating between major and minor keys, thus challenging my low register fingering technique as well. This study is very accessible on the five valve double C, E flat, and F tubas, but is also equally doable on the four valve double B flat tuba. Assuming that the player of said double B flat tuba hasn't copped out with the excuse of no fifth valve. I've warmed up many mornings on double B flat tubas with four valves and prefer just using the first three valves and using easier false tone fingerings when getting in and out of the lower notes. Guess what B flatters? you have no excuse. 
Here comes low rolling. One, two, one, two. On to one, three, five, six expanding slurs. This drill combines elements of beautiful sound and flow studies while also incorporating ear training, high and low register, and slurring flexibly between those extremes. The key on this one, once you've wrapped your head around the intervals, is to take big, full, relaxed breaths while constantly focusing on hearing the next note, especially as the skips get wider. Most of the time, I'll start the beginning of each arpeggio with no tongue on the first note, just an air attack. I don't remember what I did on this video, but it'll definitely level up this study if you're looking for a challenge. I've got another variation on this study that I'll post on my YouTube channel in a few weeks. Now, back to work. One, two. <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Okay, who doesn't like leveling entire city blocks while simultaneously earning the respect of every colleague within the blast radius? Um, bouncing bombs is an homage to the World War II British aerial bombs developed to destroy hydroelectric dams. If you try hard enough, I think you'll succeed in alienating everyone you know. So please do this in seclusion, not at work or before a concert on stage. You hear me? There's really no secrets here. The object of this drill is to finish knocking any remaining kinks in your embouchure out while helping to develop a secure low register. There's nothing worse than a tuba player that can't connect with low notes. It's kind of your purpose in life. I'll do this in the shifted embouchure as well as the normal embouchure and constantly vary between them. While it's best to do this at maximum dynamic, try doing it slurred and as quietly as possible for a real challenge. This is as straightforward as it gets. Playing all the modes of a particular key signature of your choice changing daily. You can start with one octave, then two, then three, then four, and maybe even five. I kept this one right in the middle of most players' comfort zone and also threw our B-flat friends a bone. If you hadn't noticed by now, uh, I'm kind of a stickler for knowing your scales. They tend to be like dairy products and spoil you if you don't use them. One, two, three. Flexibility drill number one. Easy peasy. Take a big breath, stay relaxed, and strive to produce as few notches between note changes as possible. Playing with what I call an average airstream is the key here. Don't manipulate your air to hit every note. Rather, blow an airstream that's exactly how you'd play a whole note on the middle note of every three note pattern. 
players that find that they produce notchy slurs are micromanaging their airstream to hit every note in the slur. If your primary focus is a smooth and sustained airflow while hearing the notes you want to play, you'll find these simple studies much more valuable than the various gymnastics we all like to do on occasion, me included. Also, I started these on B flat to try and accommodate as many keys of tuba as possible. Just add as many valves as necessary to get on the proper partial system. Second verse, same as the first. It's just wider intervals. Flexibility drill number two. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> next one for so many reasons titicaca i just like saying it so uh most people can get a serviceable single tongue articulation to happen with decent fundamentals the wheels fall off when they introduce the k syllable into the multiple tongue equation the purpose of this drill is to attempt to minimize the difference in clarity between the t syllable and the k syllable when first starting to learn this drill, I'd encourage you to play it at a slower tempo. I play the first pentascale using only the T syllable, the second scale using only the K syllable, then combine them into TKTK for the final scale of each pentascale. The two keys to success on this are one, smooth supported air that allows the tongue to flap in the wind like a flag, and two, a light tongue stroke that dips into the airstream, not jerky motions that chop up the air. Listen carefully to see if you can make your K-syllable articulation as clean and as clear as your T-syllable. The key to clean and clear articulations is almost entirely rooted in the airstream. One, two, three, four, one. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
triplets there's a joke in there somewhere i just haven't figured it out um if i've gotten through the last 15 to 20 minutes worth of these drills i'm usually good to go for most anything i need to play in any given day if i'm not terribly engrossed in checking facebook or emails i'll throw something like this into the mix before practicing or walking on stage um, it really just hits all the most important aspects of playing air support relaxation smooth legato scales and theory and most importantly, making as beautiful a sound as you can. Honestly, uh, this is the one drill I'd pick if I only had two minutes to warm up. Pick a starting key signature somewhere in the mid-low register and get to work. You should try it sometime. I hope that these drills are a help to you. I'm honored to be invited to participate in the IET Festival, and my only regret is not being there in person to meet you all in fellowship with you. And this is especially true uh, for my dear friend Adam Fry. It's been almost 27 years since we crossed paths, and I'll always cherish your friendship, buddy. Thanks for your patience and your hard work getting us all across the finish line for this festival. Um, and now, get back to work. Thank mm -hmm. you. 